Okay, today we are going to see how we derive the equations uh, from the bond graphs in, in such a way that uh, we understand what the automatic process uh, is about. This would be the mechanism that ChemG uses to derive the equations of motion and produce for you an automatic um, approach. From here. So let's take a look at the picture that you have on the screen. These are both systems that we know. Um, we have looked at some aspects of it in the past. And you see in here you have an electrical system and you have a mechanical system in here. And um, we have seen how we derive the equations uh, or, uh, using the just Kirchhoff's laws in this case, and here using Newton's law. And from these two differential equations we generated in the past the, um, um, the block diagrams that we need to do the same notation. However, now we come to this. This um, equations, as you see on the bottom, are the same ones we just showed a moment ago. And there has to be an equivalence between this bond graph that corresponds to this circuit and this bond graph that corresponds to this mechanical system and these equations. Okay? So what, what my mission is right now is to how can we derive a set of equations from this bond graph in such a way that those would do the same as this? That's the question. So, in order to do that, what I would like to do is let's get ourselves some, um, uh, take this example, we take some pictures, uh, some picture of this example in here, and uh, I'm just going to steal this picture in here and make some notes in such a way that we will be able to derive these equations here, okay? So let's go over here, and we are going to paste the picture in here so that we know what we're doing here. Paste. There you go. Okay. So this is the the example we are working with. Now here's what I'm going to do. I think you're going to like this. I am just as we we did the individual block diagrams, we can write the individual equations of each one of these elements. So let's tr let's do that. Uh, let me take a, a pen in here, let's pick this color in here. And then what about if I say, let's say yeah, I say E1. What is E1 here? What is the equivalent of E1? Is basically SE1, right? So let's just write that in there. Um, see if we get the and what is F1? Let's see if I, I'll move it over a little bit. What's F1? F1 is equal to F, F sub 2. That right there, some of you may ask me why is that? See, the question is, what is the flow on this one? Isn't it true that because this one is in integral form, it sets the flow for all the others? So it has to be F2. Although F1 is equal to F3 and F4, also the one that causes and determines the flows for all the others is F2. So we write that in there. And then um, we are done. What about we say E sub 2? What's E sub 2? E sub 2 is equal to um, E1 um, minus E sub 3 and minus E sub 4, right? Because the one junction sums the effort. What is F sub 2? 
f sub 2 is equal to 1 over i sub 2 times p sub 2, right? Yeah? And also, we know that this is d p sub 2 dt is equal to e sub 2. This is the integral form of the i right here, right? That's why we have this. Now, let's say um, what is the value? We only have four bonds, right? So I am going to say uh, what is e sub 3? Do you see what I mean? I'm putting the efforts and the flows of each one of those. This is 1 over c times q sub 3, the integral form of that c. f sub 3 is also f sub 2 for the very same reasons that we explained before that f2 sets the flow for all the others. But also that d q sub 3 dt is equal to f sub 3. And we only have one more to go, see? I am just writing the individual equations. You can see why we were doing all those individual equations and block diagrams, because we need them. See, this is R sub 4 times F sub 4. And finally, F sub 4 has to be the same as F sub 2. Any question at this point? Yeah, but, uh, P sub two. yeah what about that? This one? Minus P sub 2, right? Huh? No, no, I, um, I think um, we might need to correct a little bit the margin here. It's like that. See, right? Oops. Let's just write it well then. No, no, I didn't mean to put a minus. It's, I have the tendency to start the P like that. That's why. Okay. Now, here, here's the thing. This, this is pretty easy. All we did is write the equations of individual elements. But you see, I am going to focus here on two equations in particular. This one right here. Yeah. And the one on the bottom one here that has this one. Isn't it true that those two are differential equations? But they they are only in terms of one element. Now, follow me this with close attention because this is going to determine your whole understanding of this method. I am going to take these equations and make the substitutions that I see here. So maybe I'll just keep it on red, okay? So d p sub 2 dt is equal to e sub 2. And what is e sub 2? See here? is e1. So I am following the substitutions that are in there. e sub 3 minus e sub 4, right? And then what is e sub 1? e sub 1 is se1. And what is e sub 3? I come in here, it says 1 over c times q sub 3. And what's e sub 4? It's r sub 4 times f sub 4. So I keep substituting what I have on the left to reduce to a, a simple expression. That's what I'm after. 1 over c in terms of the state variables and the inputs. State variables are the p's and q's, and this r sub 4 times what is f sub 4? See, here is f2. Okay, and finally, I could just make the final substitution um, equal to se1 minus 1 over c times q sub 3 minus r sub 4 times 1 over i sub 2, p sub 2. This form, I'm going to get a different color just to emphasize my point. 
this form of the equation that you see here, this form, when we have substituted things, this is called what is in your homework, see? The Cauchy form. It's a name for a mathematician that uh, used first order differential equations in this form. But we need to do the other one also. So I'm. Uh, huh? Can you explain where the keys are coming from? This thing came from the integral form of the I, right? Okay. I'll do it again because uh, remember last time I had the same question. Here, this is the I. This one. This isn't it true that this is f is equal to one over i times the integral of e d t, right? And this is one over i times p. This form here is the one we have right here. Okay. So now let's do this one. D q sub three dt is equal to f sub 3 and this is equal to f sub 2 see from right there and f sub 2 is going to be 1 over i sub 2 times p sub 2 consequently the three little dots dq sub 3 dt is equal to 1 over i sub 2 p sub 2 and that is, again, this Cauchy form of the equation. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, maybe we'll write it down in here so you have, you have it good in your notes and it will also be on the video here. Why don't I write it in, in simple words? You say this form, or you say this set of equations, how many we have right here? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? This set of equations, that are going to be ten, right? Are completely equivalent, equivalent, we say this ten are equivalent, to the two above, to the two equations above. Yeah. And these two are in this so called form, in the Cauchy form. So uh, that's why I want to. Uh, I wanted to clarify this so that you don't think it's anything strange, but all we're doing is basically writing the individual equations and then put them in into this form. We, we, we do the substitutions and then we put them in this form. Okay? Now, MATLAB likes it in a, in, in, in a, in, in a little different form. We are so close to uh, to doing the matrix form that MATLAB likes. MATLAB likes it in vector form. So we take these equations and look how we are going to write. I'm going to choose a different color just to make it interesting in here, OK? So I'm just going to do the green ones in here. How is that? And I am going to write it into matrix form. I am doing nothing different. This P sub 2 dt, and the other one is dQ sub 3 dt, and equal, and then I am going to put it into the matrix form that MATLAB likes.